All right, let's go. All right, all right. My, my, my buddy, Hazel McCallion, uh, died uh, over the weekend. And uh, tough, it, it, you, know, you know, I remember her. I remember the very first time I remember I was coaching in Boston. And there was... Um, the train derailment in Mississauga. Yeah, and, and, what, what, and it was... Uh, it's like a chemical leak, I guess. It was big time. They had to evacuate a lot of people. She was, really took charge. It was the largest, non, the largest non-wartime evacuation in Canada. And she orchestrated it all. Yeah, and boy, and it went, and so the second time I saw her was I was at a, what, what do you call him, Cindy? Ratepayers Association. Oh, yeah, so, so she was the mayor of Mississauga for forever. Yeah, she for, was the mayor forever. of Mississauga forever. forever. I, I like the, the uh, big headlines in the paper. It had truck hits Hazel. Truck's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was what we, yeah. Like, Imagine if you were the pickup p- truck driver that hit Hazel McCallion when she probably was in I her know 80s. Where, I know where he hit her, too, right? But anyhow, the next time I saw the next next time I saw her was at this uh, Rate Pairs Association. And, the, and we were standing at the back, and the, this girl, she was pretty tough, too. She had that red hair and... And everything like that, and she said, and she was asking for uh, uh, public transit. Yes, tr- public and, transit and buses going down uh, Mississauga Road. Oh, is that it? And, and this little, uh, she couldn't have been five foot. I don't think she was five foot. She and she got up and she says, "When you moved in here, did you have public transportation?" She, well, you'll be whistling and Dixie before you get it here. Oh, we still don't have it. And he's uh, no, but and, but you know what? They still are complaining about it on Mississauga Road well, that they want it. And I go, yeah. anyhow, nobody she cares. Was, she was so loved by the people of Mississauga that when she went for mayor, nobody would run against her because there's no way you were going to win. And she 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 barely even campaigned. No, she never campaigned, and the whole boy, everybody loved her. Yeah. And I, I heard that she donated if money. If anyone donated to her campaign, she'd give it away to charity. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. Oh, yeah. I don't know anything about that. They, uh, the one story I like about Hazel was that first of all, when she was young, she wanted to go. I think she was from Quebec. She wanted to go to university, and she, her parents were poor, didn't have the money. So she became like a secretary and type learning and typing and stuff. And then she played hockey for five dollars a game. And then five bucks, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah. Five bucks a game so she then paid for her tuition. So wow. she was a professional hockey player. That is, yep. And wow. I remember that she was very instrumental, we'll go into it in a little while, about uh, getting the Hershey Center up and running. And uh, after we had uh, sold the Ice Dogs, uh, Steve Ludzik was coaching GM. Now, Steve wasn't from Mississauga. No, he so was he from didn't hell. know Hazel that well. So for the opening game. And I used to, first of all, I used to let her go in the warm up. She'd stay away from the nets and that. But anyhow, go ahead, Tim. So Hazel had to be in her 80s anyway, right? Yeah. At this right. time. So she walks up, and again, she can't be five foot, and she didn't she looks a little frail. So she walks up to Steve yeah. Leslie, goes, "Well, I'm going to go out and I, get me a get me a jersey because I'm going out and I'm going to skate around the. I'm going to do yeah. it before the before the warm up. I'm going to skate around." So Steve, being not knowing who she was, really says, "Well, you know, Madam Mayor, I don't think that's a good idea." Well, <laughs> who are you to tell me that it's not a good... Who do you think you are? I built this place, and you're telling me that I can't... Yeah. Who do you think do you... And Steve says, she tore a strip off me. He says, it was like coaching in the NHL, and uh, Mike uh, Mike Keenan yelling at me. And she went out, and she said she skated around and around and around. And he said, the funny thing was, the Peterborough Peets were waiting to go on, but they didn't know if they should go on until she was done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But she, she stayed on, and... and- and why she could skate though? She yeah, she, she was, was a good skater. She was, she's a good skater. Yeah. Well, wasn't she instrumental in women's hockey? I mean, she was really. You uh, know, it's a funny thing you say that, Cindy. She she kept saying to me she she did it for the you know for for us and for to get a team and everything. 
I think she got it, and for the world tournament coming up, she the when first thing the Hershey Center was built, the thing that she really went after was the women's world championship. That's right, and uh, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of people won't remember Hazel and who was it, Fran? Fran Ryder. Where they were the people that resurrected women's hockey. They Absolutely, did. and I and I remember, I remember when I came here, and at Saturday I don't do anything. Saturday when you know I used to go on, and she says. I want, and she's tough, she had a tough voice. So I want you to go up to Meadowvale Arena. And uh, I said, well, Madam Mayor, I don't do any. You be up there at 8 o'clock. I said, well, I better not fool around with her. So I was up there at 8 o'clock, and that's when I saw um, g- young girls. They were, they were from Sweden, too. <laughs> well, and, and I could see they loved hockey as much as uh, guys love hockey. Yeah, and then, you know, Dad, I wish people would know out there, you were the first one that even started talking about women's hockey on Coach's Corner. I, I mean, did. you were way be, way before your time getting uh, on, uh, the, you know, everyone's on the bandwagon now. But, I mean, back then, what would that have been, the early 80s, yeah. maybe? Yeah, you, yeah. Were, you were bringing their sweaters on. You were promoting women's hockey. Yeah. And, I remember I, I paid my own way down to Ottawa, uh, the conference, uh, finals, and, and then I went to Kitchener. Remember, I went to yeah, Kitchener. Yeah, I went to Kitchener and dropped the puck. And, and Adele well, they, and I. Didn't they, yeah, didn't the women have a rose? Yeah, they, yeah. they put it on their sweaters. They had a rose in memory because Mama just passed in 1997. And that's why I have to say, Dad, you know, you listen to all this stuff on the press about you being misogynist and fear of women or not liking women, and you go, Really, you know, I'm going to say, and plus, you were one of the first people to even get a woman reporter in the dressing rooms, and way before it was it <laughs> in was, the seventies. In the seventies, when you were with the Bruins, well, I wasn't too happy about that. I, not, nothing I could do about it. I, well, I, well, I, but they I, asked you permission. They, you and, know, it's a funny thing. I remember John Rattel coming in the room. John Rattel, and and he never came in my little cubbyhole room. Uh, uh, my wife uh, Nancy. I remember her name. <laughs> he says, won't put up with that. He well, says, that's true. I remember when you let the women uh, reporters in the Bruins dressing room, and that was the talk of the wives' room. I mean, you know, this was the 1974-75. Uh, we, the women, the wives, did not appreciate women in the dressing room with their naked husbands. And I, I personally, I, I don't blame them, right? What was that you you told me about that girl in, uh, I think it was New York Island or New York, anyhow? Yeah, I think it was. I think the first time it happened was either, the, it was in New York. I don't know if it was the Islanders or the Rangers. And she she said, like, I'm under a tight gun for an interview and I can't wait till all the players leave. Can I go in the dressing room? And I think you bumped it up to Harry. You know, ask Harry. That Harry said, "I don't know." Ask Don. So he bumped it back down to you, and you said, "Yeah, go ahead." I, I think you were mad that we didn't win or yeah, something. We lost. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. you, go ahead. But and, I didn't think she'd go in right in the room. So, <laughs> somehow or other, I didn't. I just and can't I, imagine. Well, it. then you know the funny thing that happened was so then there was a woman in Rochester. I think her name was Robin. That she was a reporter, just a woman reporter in the seventies. Started going into the Bruins room, and a few of the Bruins and the wives were com- were not happy. Yeah. So you said to her, look, can you, uh, you go into my office and I'll get you the players that you want to interview and you can have an interview, close the door, and you can have an interview with them. So she'd say, okay, like I'd like Terry O'Reilly and, and uh, you know, Brad Park. So Terry would go in, sit down, do an interview, and then Brad would go in. Well, all of a sudden the guy reporters are going, well, wait a minute here. <laughs> I could see their point. You could say, look at all the special treatment she's getting. She gets a one-on-one with these guys, and we're having the yellow thing. So you couldn't win, right? I couldn't. You couldn't win it on that You couldn't win a lot of points. Remember mom getting upset with you? With uh, you? I just can't imagine players just walking around naked and not having a towel on. Yeah, I remember remember your your mother coming to me and saying, I understand that you you had the interview. you, You do interviews with no clothes on. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Like, where's where she, where she going with this one? I, and then she said, uh, PJ. PJ, yeah. her nephew, told yeah. told mom. Yeah, that, that I did the interview when I never had any clothes on. <laughs> like, it, I, I just and didn't the, understand I remember it. you saying, but Rose, because he, he was a little uncomfortable himself sitting there. He had his clothes on. You were naked sitting there in your, uh-huh. in your thing. And, he, and, and you said, but, but Rose, he's been in the army. <laughs> Yeah, and Ma- the guy, the guy, the guy was in the U.S. Army too. <laughs> Ma- I couldn't figure that one out. I Ma- just called you animals walking yeah, around naked. Yeah, yeah she like called that. me an animal. 
just saw her last week. Hazel, yeah. She was and 101, right? 100, 100, 100 years old. And she seemed like, she seemed good. She seemed good. She was talking. And- I remember the last time you and I saw her with you was we were at a nice, st- we were at a steelhead game, a junior game. And uh, so this would have been just before COVID. And she came into, we were kind of sitting in a box. And she came into the box and she stood for the whole period. Really? Like I couldn't stand. I had to sit down, and she's and she really knew the players. Like I was surprised. Yeah, Again, she would. She, she would have been like ninety seven then, maybe ninety eight. And she said that Quentin Byfield. I, she says uh, now he's supposed to go pretty high this year. What kind of player do you think he is? And yeah. they were playing Sudbury, and he goes, "Oh, that Levine." Now I heard that he was the first person from Israel ever drafted in it. Like she really knew the yeah, players. Yeah, she knew them. Yeah. And you go, wow, like, and she was like, and stood for the whole time. And I'm thinking, yeah, I think that, I think that's right. Boy, she, she was sharp as a tack. And sharp as a, t- I, I visited her last week. She was still as sharp as a tack last week. She was, and uh, uh, tough, tough to see her go. And uh, what, a hundred and, what was it? 101, I think she was. Her, her birthday's February 14th. Yeah. I didn't, she didn't make it well. God well, love her. She'll, we'll always remember everybody. She'll always be the mayor of Mississauga. Yeah. No matter who's the mayor, Bonnie Crombie or whoever's next, Hazel will always be the mayor of, of Mississauga. God love her. So, Dad, the other day I watched a documentary on Harold Ballard. I wanted to know the history about it. And I got to tell you, I was a little apprehensive because I thought they'd probably do a hatchet job on him. And they didn't. But, but they didn't. I thought it was very, very well. I learned I learned a lot. I often wondered, how did Harold get the whole team, like all the all the shares in the team for... The funny thing is, I don't know how he got them all. He must have pretty Well, good... it showed it on the, on the, on the uh, yeah. documentary. So, people, you should really watch it. But uh, you were on it right i was on it yeah. i didn't even know you were on it and there you popped up while i was watching it twice i think i was twice on you you were surprised that uh, we didn't ask pre- uh, yeah we dad and i went down they shot this right in the middle of covid which was kind of surprising. oh yeah and, sh- and shiny so we yeah so we went was down fun. to they they had the whole floor like 12th floor of the royal york in toronto which is a very old building so dad and I walked in and uh, we got a car. You know, you had to have the mask and everything. And we walked in to the Royal York. It was like the shining. It was all shuttered. There was no staff. Yeah, and, no, and That it's would be old, eerie. And it's an old building, right? Oh, and yeah. it was dark. Elegant, though. And we're walking through and I said, this reminds me of the shining. If those two girls come out and pop out or something. So we yeah. go and then we go to the top. Uh, they had a whole floor and they were interviewing. There was the producers there and, and Jason Priestley was there. And I was so mad that we left that I we didn't, didn't talk I about remember. Ask Jason Priestley. One of our favorite movies, maybe your favorite movie of all time, is Tombstone. And he has a small role in it, a recurring role. About three, he's in it about four or five times. And I, we didn't ask him about it. And I was like, damn, oh. I would have asked him, like, what was it like to shoot on that movie? Yeah, and, and he was asking the questions. And I said, we should be asking him the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you really made some really good points uh, in in the show. One was that Harold never wanted people to know what a good guy he was to charity, and you and they asked you why. You know, ah, and they asked you, you know, why do you think he was like that, right? And uh, you you were really you you really answered well in that. What I what I answer? I forget even. Well, anybody. he just said you said he didn't want people to know because it would ruin his persona because he was a gruff gruff guy and boy, they should. I think I think he played to the camera though. Oh, that absolutely! And I, the media guys that covered him day to day knew who knew what he was like. It was the people that didn't that didn't cover him day to day that wrote all the bad stuff yeah. about him. They didn't yeah. know. They didn't know. Him. Yeah, and they addressed. They you had on- a pretty good club up until seventy nine, and I, and I remember him phoning me, and he phoned me. He really did phone, and he offered me a three year contract and uh, more money. And I said, no, I can't. I, I already give my word to uh, the Do you think you could have worked with uh, Harold? I don't know. It's funny how the Lord works in mysterious ways. This wonders be whole. Well, he saved your job one time. Well, yeah. He, they said, uh, we're going to get rid of Cherry. He says, you get rid of Cherry. He says, get your cameras out of the gardens. <laughs> Pretty good. That's right. That's right. I, I didn't find that out till after he died. Brad Ralph told you. But... Um 
back in the day in the gardens, Hockey Night in Canada, the studio it was so small you couldn't believe. And then there was a little green room. Yeah, there, and he came in just ranting and raving. And he st- and I started to laugh, and I couldn't stop laughing. He said, "What the fuck are you laughing at?" <laughs> and I, 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 you know what a te- you know what a teacher, you know you're not supposed to laugh at me, right, a teacher. Yeah. Giggles. And I couldn't stop laughing. What were you laughing at him about? I don't know. Well, he's just, well I remember the time you had that uh, producer, Don Wallace, who was a bit, of a, a bit of a simp, and you really gave it to Toronto Maple Leafs, and nobody gave it to the Leafs back then. Oh, yeah. Nobody ever said anything bad about the Leafs, and I give it to the Leafs. And... Uh, he, and uh, and he, you're going to get you're going to get us thrown out of here. You're in it. Yeah, and I'm sitting there and I think, geez, I didn't think I was that bad. And you know what it was? No, then the phone rang. The phone rang, and, and they it, said it's for, it's Mr. Ballard for you, Don. And oh, he, he says, see, see, he, he's <laughs> going to kick us out of here. And he said, Wendell's mother's in the crowd. Get a shot of her. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. I it was it was unbelievable. See, that's the type of stuff he would do. Yeah, Should yeah. I tell you my little br- brush with? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you had so, you had something to do with Puck. Yeah, with uh, well, and they had Puck on the documentary. Puck yeah. was TC Puck, Tiger Cat Puck, and he was uh, Harold and Yolanda's. Um, because and they brought up Yolanda. They addressed that yeah, situation, they, they, which yeah. was, and I thought they were quite fair yeah, with her they too. Were, they were, and that, they owned a blonde Bouvier de Flanders dog, and uh, I love that breed. It was white. Well, it was blonde. It wasn't white. It was blonde. Uh, That's what they call blonde. Anyway, they were taking a picture of him probably for the team because he was usually in the team pictures, right? He was, yeah. Yeah, he was in the team pictures. So I had the groom mobile, a van that, you know, groomed the dogs in the van and all this. And they called me up to come down to the gardens and groom them. And what did they say? They Well, I saw... Come down and groom Puck. So I, I drove down. Remember that old 1973 yeah. Ford that was real jalopy and all this? So, I mean, where you're in downtown. Well. Yeah. Where, in, where do you pull up to the Toronto Maple Leafs Gardens? So I thought, well, I'll go in the back. Maybe the Zamboni comes out. Yeah. There's back doors. And so I pull up. Well, they just came and started yelling, scream, get that thing out of here. You can't park here. And I said, well, I'm here to groom Puck. Well, it was like I was like done that I was, you know, the doors open, come on in, you know, come into the gardens. I go, well, I don't know if I should pull in the gardens because the water, when I groom, when I bathe them, goes right out of the floor. Don't worry about it. Come on in. (laughs) So they went down and they got puck and I groomed him, you know, to perfection. What'd you do to him? Well, I brushed him, brushed him out, and then I trimmed his, trimmed his, you know, I gave him a bath. Then I had to blow dry him, right? Then I had to scissor cut him. So I just shortened him up a bit. I didn't shave him because most people with Bouviers, they like that rough look. So I just tame him and all that. So then I'm finished. I go, well, okay, who do I give the dog to? There's, you know, no. So I give it to some person. And there, there I am. I'm going, uh, hello, yeah. <laughs> who's going to pay me? <laughs> you know, I don't know if they thought they were, I was doing it free or what. Well, it, it, you, if, you, if you had the opportunity to do puck, that, that should be good that enough. Should, should oh, be is good that enough. it? Yeah. yeah, that's the way it oh, should be. Well, I did you ask for money? Well, yeah, I did. I go, well, who's paying me here? Well, they looked at me as if I had three heads. Yeah, well, you're lucky. Well, I don't know. So they went up into the office and it was $85. That was a lot, you know, $85. That's an $85. Wow. Buck. And so I got a Toronto Maple Leaf Garden <laughs> check. Kept it. And so I come home, I'm all excited, you know, he signed it. And I said, Dad, look at, look at, a Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens check. And I said, and Dad goes, and that is the very reason why he went to jail. <laughs> I remember you saying that. I don't. I don't remember saying that, well, but that is true. Well, that's what you said, because he wrote off a lot of the stuff, his personal stuff, yeah. uh, against the gardens, right? You know, he did renovations I, at his home. It, well, they addressed it in the in the documentary, too. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I cashed it, 85 bucks, right? So 85 bucks, you couldn't afford to... I couldn't afford, you know, not to not to cash to, it. To frame it. That's right. I, you know, I was having... But you know what? Well, and I love Bouvier's, you know. Yeah, you like the, good dogs. But the documentary was pretty good. Like, I, like yeah. I was really afraid... That that they were going to do another hatchet job on another hockey quote unquote icon, but they were but to, to Jason Priestley's you know yeah, credit, it, would, it, it was it was pretty good, yeah, very well, educational. Was, I thought it was going to be a real hatchet job. I said, how did it get involved in this? 
And uh, it wasn't. It Everybody was the, showed up too. Settler and Tiger yeah. Williams. Jimmy McKenney, Wendell Clark. Oh, Jimmy McKenney. He's funny Jimmy as McKinney, usual. Oh, my funny. goodness. And uh, anyhow. So if you get a chance to see it. Yeah, you know, it's it, it'll be up. I'm sure it'll be up on. Uh, oh, it's on again. Yeah. On I was on the other night again, and uh, it's real really worth it if you want history of the Leafs. But the only thing I would have ended differently, Dad. This is how I would have said they kind of blamed Harold for the Leafs not winning the Stanley Cup. You know, during his reign. yeah yeah, and I would have said, well, how have they done since he's left? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I they, never thought of that. They still blamed him. Oh, it's the Ballard curse. Oh, it's still Harold's fault. Yeah, they right. haven't got out of the playoffs in if twenty years. If they do win it, they'll say they, get, they settled that Ballard curse that he put on. Right. I when did he? I don't remember him ever saying they'll never. Did he say no, that? No, I don't know. They just said this bad mojo. He never. He never put a curse on. I or never anything. saw it. Yeah. Anyhow. He treated me right, and he was going to give me a job. And uh, and he, he saved your job one time? Saved me a job one time, and he's okay in my book. So, Dad, Sydney, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. They're a Canadian-owned online casino and sports book. And if you sign up now and use the promo GRAPES, they'll match your deposit up to $500. They give you 10 spins on the big wheel to win some big bucks. And your first sports bet, they spot you 25 bucks, which is pretty Sounds good. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, they're uh, Canadian dollars, which is, uh, yeah, which is always Canadian good. Canadian dollars. So, Dad, I got a question to ask. A lot of stuff kind of happened uh, over the... Week with the hockey, uh, you know, Boost Boudreau, unfortunately, the left and Tockett's in, but that's no surprise. We talked no, about that last that, week. I, we, we talked about that last week. Go ahead. So, but um, last night, this is Sunday morning, Edmonton's hammering Chicago 7 2, and Edmonton had to have their emergency backup goalie dress up because the Skinner was sick. Yeah. And Campbell went in. They didn't have the backup. And so it scores 7 2, and with a couple of minutes to go, Connor McDavid says to the coach Woodcroft, why don't we put him in? And he goes, yeah, okay. And so with two minutes to go, they take out Campbell and put in the kid. I think his name was Matt Berlin. And he made one save and they won. Now, my question to you is, if you were Chicago, would you be mad? I, I don't know whether I'd, I may be sitting having a beer I, I, after a game or something. I might be. But I remember that. I would I would bet Chicago's really going to turn it on the next game. Yeah, I, I really do. I really do believe that. So if they that's play the way again, hockey players think. So the next time they play, if they play in, if they play again this year, the odds are going to be well, and you're going to get good odds on Chicago. So maybe take Chicago because there's going to be a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, revenge, maybe. Oh, it'll it'll be good. It'll be a let, let me put it this way: it'll be a pretty good game. Okay. So, Dad, Cindy, next week we're going to get some of your questions. We're going to ask about Buffalo. We're how, many peop- how many people have written in? Oh, you know what, Dad? They write in all the time. They want to know about this, especially when there's like a bad call. They want they, they, they go on the Don Cherry Grapevine Facebook and say, Don, what about that call against so-and-so? You know, yeah. they're, they're all that. So we, we got Don't quite a few. So, but a lot of people are asking about Buffalo, about how Buffalo's going to do. And then, Cindy, we want to talk about an article that is absolutely like, phenomenal about dad's suits oh it was i mean i got i have the link i got the link to it and it's called it's from imaginations and it's a journal of cross cultural image studies and it is a long article and it analyzes your suits and why you wore them the way you do i read it and i didn't know how to I didn't know half the words. Well, there are words in there that I didn't even understand, but I it was very, very yes. entertaining. It's an academic study. Ac- it's, yeah. it's not like uh, a opinion piece on your suits, but it's an academic study. It's by Julie Petroff, and she goes into great detail about the history of uh, people dressing in the 30s and 40s. And oh, we'll do that one. And she called you a dandy. A dandy? A dandy. Oh, well, that's... And she defines dandy and all this, and uh, yeah. very entertaining. So, can we talk about that next week? Yeah, let's talk because I think the All Star Game is coming up, so we won't have much to talk about no. next week. <laughs> As they say, every time something goes wrong in the National Hockey League, Dad, they type, they they put up a post saying, "What's going on? We want to know what Dad, what Don's thinking about." Well, let me. We'll have a lot of fun next week, and I'll answer most of the questions.